In today's video, we are taking a look at how you can make some emergency candles out of supplies you should have around the home. Guys, we've got an awesome new shirt. This is limited edition, so get yours now by clicking the link in the description below. Guys, it's always good to be prepared. Even though we are in the age of technology and we always have phones and flashlights in our home, sometimes there's a power outage, there may be an emergency. It might be nice if you knew how to make your own emergency candles. And the good news is you can actually make it using some household supplies. I have got a lot of supplies here today and we wanna see what sort of candles and lanterns we can make with these. So let's get started. Here's the basic idea. We are going to try to make several different types of candles and lanterns using household materials. And if those work, try to make one giant candle out of the leftover supplies. For our first emergency candle, we are going to start with the simplest one. And you may have seen this on the channel before. We're gonna make a butter candle. In the past, you have seen Grant make these butter candles. They're pretty cool because they are so simple to put together. He used butter and tissue paper, and that's really all you need. However, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna add one more thing to the mix, very simple to find in your home, toothpicks. All right, let's see, eight tablespoons. So technically, this should be an eight-hour candle, but what we're gonna do, we're actually just gonna split it right down the middle. We're gonna try two different versions of this, see which one burns better. Well, it's not a perfectly even cut, but that's okay. The way Grant shown you before, you take a piece of tissue paper. What we're gonna do is we're actually going to fold it into a triangle and then we're going to roll it. That's gonna be our wick. Now he did use a toothpick for this one as well, but in a different way than what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these toothpicks. We're gonna poke a hole straight through the butter. Then we're gonna use the toothpick itself to poke this piece of tissue paper into that hole, sort of drive it down. Now here's the difference. We used the toothpick last time to simply poke that piece of tissue paper down into the center of the butter. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm actually going to keep the toothpick in the butter itself. I'm gonna take a piece of tissue, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to grease it to make sure that it's kind of waxed. You'll see here I actually have some commercial candle wicks and they are wax to begin with. That keeps it from burning too fast, burning out before the candle itself can melt. So I'm going to use our butter to sort of wax this piece of tissue paper, and we're going to wrap our waxed, quote unquote, tissue paper around it. The reason I wanna do this is because when butter melts, it's going to start to slump, and I'm concerned that with our little wick here, what will happen is it will actually fall into the butter itself and it will go out. I'm hoping that the toothpick will keep it steady. Go ahead and clip that. Grant's method works phenomenally well. I just wanna see if this one will too. So first off, you can even see that the flame size is different. Yes, you can get this one to light, but it's not gonna be as bright as our little toothpick one. So we're gonna keep these going while we move on to the next one. For our next super simple candle, we are going to be using things that you should be able to find in your kitchen pretty much always. We're going to use some vegetable oil and some salt. So I have here some handy dandy super tiny little jars and they're incredibly useful. They have a really nice glass body, but they also have a plastic top. So if we need to poke a hole through these, we can. So we have our little jar and we are going to fill it with salt. You don't need to fill all the way to the top. Next, we're gonna take our oil and we are gonna make sure that that salt is fully saturated. All right, so you want this firm enough that if I was to put, say, a toothpick in here, it's not just gonna slump over, perfect. But also, you can sort of see this nice thin layer of vegetable oil at the top. That's what you're looking for. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our toothpick. You might wanna dip it in that uh, the salt-oil mixture just to make sure, again, it is nice and saturated. And there's a few different ways that you can go about doing this next step. If you have a cotton t-shirt, it has to be 100% cotton or cotton balls, or here I actually have 100% cotton dish towels, you could use those too. We're gonna go ahead and start with the cotton balls. And this is super simple. What we're gonna do, we're gonna sort of pull that cotton ball apart and we're gonna wrap it around our toothpick. Go ahead and saturate your cotton, just like your toothpick, the important thing here is to make sure that there aren't any gaps. If 
you've got any gaps in that cotton while you're wrapping, it just might not burn the same way. Put it into your candle. Cut down a little bit more to size. And that took off immediately, that's awesome. Salt and vegetable oil candle. Absolutely gonna work in a pinch if you need a light source. Let's go ahead and try a few other types of material just to see if they work too. Now normally when you are making a, a candle with commercial candle wicks, uh, some people do this differently. Some people put a spot of glue at the bottom of their container and then fill it with like pieces of uh, maybe soy flakes, things like that around it. Or you wait until you have filled the container or a jar with uh, molten wax before you dip them in and just make sure it stays. This is gonna be a little bit harder. I'm gonna go ahead and poke it down with a toothpick. Hopefully it will stay. If you have candle making supplies at home to begin with, I'm not sure why this would be your go-to, but let's see if it works. Now let's try with a piece of towel wick. This is not a polyester blend or anything else. This is 100% cotton, otherwise it would melt. First what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make sure this is nice and saturated with that vegetable oil as well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a toothpick just like we did for the butter candle. And we're gonna push that piece of fabric down. There we go. And our uh, dish towel. So here we've got toilet paper and a toothpick. This one is our commercial wick, and this one is a dish towel. All of these are simply salt and vegetable oil. A very, very simple way of making a quick candle in a pinch. So something I wanna point out, while we were making our uh, little jar candles, our butter candles actually did something kind of interesting. The one that I wanted to test, where I wrapped a piece of toilet paper around a toothpick, that went out. Grant's style that he made right here, this was simply toilet paper that got shoved down into the piece of butter itself. That one's still going. So Grant, that one wins. The next thing that we're gonna try is making a 100 hour candle. If you have an emergency kit at home, you probably have one of these, but we're gonna try and make one ourselves. This is pretty simple. What you're gonna use is any type of wax and a very simple store-bought candle. Start off with, we gotta use Crisco. Different ways that you can make a 100 hour candle like this, you can actually get uh, candle making supplies like those soy beads we talked about before, little pieces of wax or just melting candle wax, pouring them into the jar before placing the candle. I'm gonna try this a different way. We're gonna go with Crisco, which is disgusting. As much as you can, try to tamp down the Crisco or whatever thick wax or fat you're using to make sure that there aren't really any air bubbles. All right, so I'm gonna see the length here. Our Crisco ends about there. I'm gonna make it just a little bit taller. And we'll shave it down as need be. If you have a candle that is longer than your mason jar, just be careful that you don't cut through the wick if you have to do this. And I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison with this one and this one. So I'm gonna make sure that I cut them down to the same length. All right, our two candles. So we have a control test and the one that we're actually gonna put in our 100-hour candle. Here's the really, really difficult part. Just a piece of paraffin wax. Hold our candle in place. Regular candle. We're gonna light these at exactly the same time. Here we go. Here we go. All right, we're gonna leave these burning back behind me. We've got a GoPro set up so you can kind of see the time lapse of how these are gonna burn. Let's see what happens. So for our last emergency flame, we're actually gonna try and make an oil lamp. And this is incredibly simple. All that we need is a mason jar, something that is 100% cotton. This can be a piece of t-shirt or if you have it, cotton cord, which is what I'm gonna use, some wire and some oil. Here's the most complicated part about one of these oil lamps. We actually have to put a hole straight through the top of the mason jar. Now, in a pinch, you can do this with 
even a rock if need be. I've seen people do this with chisels, with nails. In an emergency, you might not have this, but there are other ways to do this. We're gonna go ahead and use a chisel and a hammer. If you decide that you're cutting a piece of flat fabric, or if you even have a piece of flat fabric, it's just sort of like, you know, a strip, uh, you can use a flat chisel. Because I've got some round cording here, I'm trying to make sort of a round hole for it to go through. You want it big enough to be able to feed through not only the cord, but the oil itself, but not so big that it's gonna fall through. If you make it too big, that's okay, and I'll show you why. Perfect, that should be able to feed through. Now, I hammered it upside down those last few times. The reason why is that means that the cord will be able to pull through. You can trim the wick, but it's not gonna slip back down into the jar. All right, so something that I wanna point out, while I have been working on these other different types of candles, we actually lost a couple of others. Yes, our butter candles went out, but if you look at our three here that we have got in salt and oil. This was our commercially available wick. There's a tiny flame, but it's barely there. This one here, this is our toilet paper and toothpick. Now, while that is still burning, you'll notice that we had a lot of smoke. You can kind of see a burned edge around it. And this one is our dishcloth. All right, we've got our jar, we've got our cord, we've got our oil, we've got the hole in the jar. So, we're ready to go. So if any of you have ever used an oil lamp before, they have a pretty simple system. You have a wick that goes down into the oil, it gets sucked up by the material, comes out the top, and that oil is the fuel itself. So that's kind of what we're replicating here. Make sure that you have more than the jar's width itself. The reason why is that with an oil lamp, even though it is using the oil itself as a fuel, you need to trim the wick from time to time. That's why we have this hole here so that we can pull the wick out and then we can trim it down as it burns. So a little bit to sort of stay wrapped around the bottom. To make sure that our wick stays where we need it, we're gonna go ahead and use our wire. Nice part about this is you don't have to have this as an exact science. What we're gonna do with the wire is we're going to wrap it around our wick. That way our wick will stay exactly where we put it. And now we wanna make sure that this is thoroughly saturated in the oil itself. So we're gonna dip the whole thing in. Try and squeeze out the excess oil. You don't want this to be so soaked that it drips everywhere. Now, as you can see, it's quite the opening there. So what we're gonna do, find the length that you want We'll trim it down to wherever we need, use this wire, and just sort of make a nice loose circle. Because this is attached to the rest of the wire, that wick's not gonna go anywhere. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim down that wire itself, and we're gonna trim down our wick to where we need it. And there you go. A nice bright light, easily brighter than anything else that we've got right now, less smoke, and this one is gonna last you the longest. There's a few ways that you can make candles, but I don't feel like we've explored all of the options here. Go big or go home. I am so very proud of myself. Hey, Nate! Yeah. Come here. I made a thousand hour candle. What, what is this? <laughs> it's a candle. Remember how I said I was gonna make emergency candles today? What kind of emergency are you expecting? I was expecting, you know, a bunch of uh, dishware and uh, other things to start saying be our guest to us. Uh, it appears to be made of toothpaste. <laughs> no, 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 Crisco. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that should burn a little better than toothpaste at least. Yeah. How long do you think it'll burn for? Uh, I don't have a good prediction. That seems like a lot of fuel. It could go for a while. Yeah, but you're proud of me, right? Very proud. You should be proud. Guys, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. Go ahead and click that box up at the top for our latest video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.